there are lots of different styles of companion planting and all of the techniques, all the combinations fall into one of these three categories. Managing height and light, space efficiency, or disease insect control. So without further ado, let's talk about height and light. So some plants are taller than others and the really tall ones like corn and sunflowers, they can act as living trellising for things. The classic three sisters is a perfect example. The corn, beans and squash, the way indigenous people on our continent were brilliantly growing lots of things, including many others. Um, but they would grow you know, dry corn and dry beans and the dry beans, here they are, are totally drying down on the corn which has been trellising them all season. And that bean, that bean has been fixing atmospheric nitrogen so that it can give that corn more nitrogen throughout the season as well. So that's one way that height can factor into companion planting. Another aspect of height is that it's going to cast a shadow. <laughs> and sometimes that's great if you have a tomato the tomato behind this corn is going to be really sad the watermelon is going to produce less watermelon but if you're growing lettuce if you're growing cilantro behind this in its shadow all of a sudden the lettuce isn't going to bolt as fast the cilantro isn't going to bolt as fast that's actually ideal for those things especially they don't love growing in the heat of summer and they'll just go to seed and bolt more quickly so you can totally leverage the shadows cast by tall plants in your garden, even tomatoes. Um, you can grow lettuce, even basil in between your tomato plants. And then all of a sudden you're really maximizing um, those relationships. Another facet is space efficiency. So number two, space efficiency. And sometimes there's just, it, tomatoes are another great example the three sisters corn beans and squash is another great example they all have a little these plants have a little different habit and when they can all grow together and get plenty of sunlight and not be competing with each other um, so with, let's break down the corn beans and squash the corn is tall and they have nice narrow leaves so they can fend for themselves in the category of light they also have fairly fibrous root systems that aren't that are gonna and they're really drought tolerant so they can they can totally fend for themselves. The beans totally need to be trellised, but other than that, if they can get up above the winter squash, they're gonna be just fine. And because corn has these long leaves, they're not out competing each other. The squash, on the other hand, is this long vining octopus of a creature creating this carpet of solid green foliage on the bottom that is effectively taking apart, taking out competing the weeds. So, space that's one way to think about space efficiency there's also thinking about space efficiency where you can have all of these kale plants but then in between you can have onions and leeks that are going to be tall and narrow and they won't compete with each other and they'll brilliantly um, just share space and time. Another example is growing radishes and your carrot rows. So I'll give a whole lot more lists of these, all these things, ways that you can stack the functions, way that you can grow lots of different plants and have their structures um, not outcompete with each other. And finally, and this is where companion planting gets all its good rap um, is that magic that happens when you're actually alleviating a lot of your pest pressure and disease pressure by planting the right plants next to each other. And check out our video on our go-to for all our four go-to plants for all of those juicy details. But in short, basically all the alliums, whether it's onions, shallots, leeks, especially chives that are, and scallions that are easy to grow, they have tons of sulfur compounds in them that generally no insect likes that isn't going to be loved by a beneficial insect. So all of a sudden, you're putting, if you can interplant those alliums and anything in the you know, shallots, onions, leeks, those are all in the allium family. Anything in the allium family is a great companion plant. Um, marigolds are another dream because especially our short Queen Sophia, the dwarf marigolds, they're really short, covered in flowers that are bringing in tons of beneficial insects um, but they're short they're not out competing um, other plants we actually tuck them in between our broccoli plants in between basically everything and marigolds have this special capacity 
the roots are exuding all these compounds that nematodes don't like and specifically the kinds of nematodes that are really not great for vegetables and there are lots of different there are lots of different nematodes and generally they get a bad rap in the same way that bacteria gets a bad rap but the vast majority of bacteria on the planet is actually keeping us alive <laughs> and is vital to us surviving another day there's just some that really get in the way and make uh, make trouble for us and so they give the you know one bad apple um, and the same is true for nematodes most nematodes are awesome but those marigolds are exuding compounds that the nematodes that we don't like that are causing all kinds of problems in our radishes, other brassicas, and our alliums. All of a sudden, they don't like hanging out where those marigolds are, so they're not gonna be there. So yes, there are lots of different ways to think about companion planting and lots of different strategies, but think of height and light leveraging those as unique resources they are. Think about space efficiency and think about what diseases and insects are going to be deterred or attracted um, in the case of beneficial insects to what you're planting, the way you're planting it, when you're planting it. So all this is such a fun puzzle, friends, and I'm so glad that you are considering it all.